football is coming thick and fast. For Manchester United in January and February, you're looking at a game every three days. Man United have got Charlton on Tuesday, followed by City on Saturday, followed by the rescheduled Palace game in between City and Arsenal. Then you're looking at what? It's busy as hell. The squad is needed. Ten Hag has to be able to rely on his squad that he can rotate and complacency doesn't creep in. This is going to be my starting 11 video for the Charlton game because I think Ten Hag has learned some lessons from some rotations previously that I don't think he's going to repeat again. Well, certainly the mistakes of them. So make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. But United right now, look, our last 17 games, the form has been... Pretty damn spectacular. Not every single performance has been there, but the but the form itself is fantastic. And going into this game against Charlton, on paper, United are clear favourites. Charlton, mid-table in League One. I think they're nine points off the playoffs. I think they're currently 12th. They've needed penalties apart in all but one game so far to qualify for their for the quarterfinals. I think only the second time in their history. And they've never qualified for the semi-finals of the League Cup. It's all stacked in United's favour. But again, it's these sort of games where previously it's been the banana skin for us. And if I'm thinking about one game that Ten Hag will be remembering in his head going into this match, I think he'll he'll go back to that game against Sociedad. It was still a strong team he put out, but he made some changes. I remember he took he made Maguire and Lindelof, he brought those two in, took Martinez out, and that was when United were banging form, and then that loss came in. And it sort of took us all by surprise. Looking at the games we've got now, Ten Hag has to have at least one eye on the game on Saturday. On the game, three big Premier League games coming up in an eight-day period. And Charlton right now, as I said, they're not in a good position. But who is he going to start against them on Tuesday night? How much rotation do you think Ten Hag will feel confident in having? And I think that's the big question. Because there will be rotation, right? This was the starting eleven that played Everton at the weekend. It was a stronger eleven than I think that most of us thought. Some of us thought that Casemiro might be rested. Some of us thought, well, I don't know, you, you might see some different changes. But Ten Hag changed absolutely, well, not absolutely nothing. He made a couple of changes, but none as far as we expected. Not as many anyway. Now, these are the changes that I'm going to put into this team. First and foremost, I think that the maguire lindelof situation, it can't be repeated, even against Everton. If I looked at Manchester United in that first half, it, it, the lack of tempo that we get because Maguire and Lindelof are playing, it's painful. It slows everything down. The midfield, the attack, every single part of the team gets slowed down because neither of them wants to real, really take responsibility in driving the ball forward. And that is why, for me, without doubt, Lissandro Martinez is starting this game. And I don't think Eric Ten Hag will really be able to think that he can afford not to play him. Martinez, right, we want him fit and ready to face City. I don't think he does that. Unless he gets nine, well, he won't get 90 minutes here against Charlton, but he's came off the bench a couple of times. This is where we're going to see Martinez start. I'd be very, very surprised if Martinez didn't start. Because it's what I mean about rotation, but selective rotation. It's not about just taking an 11, a full 11 out, putting a different 11 in. This team's not good enough to do that right now and expect the same level of performance. That is why, for me, Martinez is critical. But I don't think Varane will start this game. I think you're going to see Martinez play there alongside Harry Maguire. Now, Luke Shaw, you could say that he deserves a place there at centre-back. He does, but he's been playing left centre-back. And Martinez, if he plays, he's going to be playing left centre-back. So you won't see Shaw there. And I also don't think you'll see Shaw in a starting eleven. I think Shaw has been absolutely fantastic, even as an auxiliary centre-back. He's proven, he's shown there that away at Barcelona, when, when Martinez is, in, is suspended, Luke Shaw is going to be starting that game. I'd be very surprised if that didn't happen, given what we've seen in the Premier League. Was it Wolves and Burnley where he played? Wolves and... I can't remember the second game, but he played in the Premier League. Wolves. I've just said Wolves twice. Anyway, Shaw's been decent at centre-back, just as much as he's been very good at left-back. I think he'll be left on the bench and Malasia will be there to make sure that Shaw's fit for City. If he can rest Shaw, I think he will. I'm going to go for Maguire alongside him, and I'm probably going to go for Wan-Bissaka at right-back, who I think has actually been playing pretty damn well. Certainly the best that he's played under Eric Ten Hag. Kind of the only, only time he's played under Ten Hag. I'm going to go for that in the back five. I'm not going to switch De Gea out for Button. I don't know if Button. I think he is available. But I think he's going to keep De Gea in that team. That's my back five. A couple of changes, but some experience in there. And Martinez, I think, is key because he needs to keep that experience throughout the entire team to make sure that complacency doesn't creep in. As I said, there's one man in this team. There's two men in this team that's going to make sure that complacency doesn't creep in. One of them is Martinez and one of them is Casemiro. Now, the midfield, there's a lot of questions to be asked about midfield. And they all revolve around Bruno because Bruno is, of course, suspended for this game. And it asks questions. 
Who is going to come in for Bruno? What does that mean in terms of the shape of the midfield behind him? Now, I think this might finally be a game where we see Casemiro get a little bit of a rest. And that, I'll be honest, that does scare the absolute shit out of me. I don't really know how we play without him in the team. But McTominay's got to show that he can do it. Isn't it weird? Like the last time we were going into the derby, uh, it was McTominay who was banging for him and Casemiro was still sort of like on the edges of the team, really yet to make his stamp on it. And now it's just pure Casemiro time, baby. And Mark McTominay's been sort of cast into the shadows. I think McTominay starts this game and he should be more than good enough of keeping enough of a tempo in this team without Casemiro in it so Casemiro can get a rest. And as I said, I think this, is, for me, is, is why Martinez is crucial. He's got to make sure that tempo is maintained. Now, because Bruno's out, let's take Bruno off here because there's different solutions you could have. And I imagine we're probably going to see this, right? Now, uh, quite a few of you will probably correctly be arguing that we should be seeing Christian Eriksen on the bench, rested, completely rested. But with Bruno, in, with Bruno suspended, Donny van der Beek injured, I think you're going to be seeing Ericsson there because I think you'll definitely be seeing Fred behind him. If you're looking at uh, somebody who's really impressed from the bench in the last few weeks, Fred's cameos from the bench, very, very good. He's He's got that pressing intensity, you know, the sort of like, the way Fred plays, it suits, really suits the last half an hour of games. And he's been playing extremely well. I'm going to go for that as a midfield three, right? And I know there's one player who there's going to be question marks around and that is... This lad, Zidane Iqbal. You could well see, look, if Iqbal starts, for example, I think you're looking at this. I think you're looking at Ericsson on the bench. I think you're looking at Fred playing in the number 10 and you're looking at Iqbal playing there alongside McTominay, which is pretty much where he's played and every time he's played for United so far under Eric Ten Hag. I don't want to see Fred in the number 10 position anymore. I can't remember what game it was. Was it Newcastle? Sod knows what it was. But Fred just looked lost inside that role. But maybe because of Bruno's pressing from the front, Maybe that's more likely. And maybe we will see Casemiro and Ericsson rested. And if we're being completely honest, that's an ideal situation. Sod it. I'm going to change my start 11. I'm going to go here with Iqbal there and with Fred in the number 10 role. Now, that does have its caveats. And Fred in the number 10 role, yeah, you've got to be more intelligent than you played there last time, man. But with Bruno out, maybe Ten Hag will be looking to Fred to replace that sort of intensity and transition, he calls it. Good in defence, good in attack, energy everywhere. And you can rely on Fred for that. Now, in attack, there's more questions to be asked. And they all revolve around whether or not Martial will be rested. And I think he will. Ten Hag has made it clear that he likes Martial's current level of performance. Obviously, he wants some goals from him, some better finishing. But in terms of movement, team play, Martial's doing it. But he doesn't have the fitness to play every three days. So I think if there's one change that's definitely going to happen with this attack... I think you're going to see Martial drop to the bench. And then there are a host of different players that we can have conversations about. Marcus Rashford, do you risk him? I mean, he is our goal scorer right now. He is the main goal scoring threat in attack. What about Anthony Langer? Does he start? Does he give a rest to maybe someone like Anthony and keep Anthony completely fresh for the derby? There's so many questions you can ask in attack. And in my opinion, this is what we're going to be seeing. I think... You might see a Langer play as, not, I suppose, like a false nine. Yeah, effectively like a false nine. I think you'll see Rashford on the bench, and I think you'll see Garnacho there. I think Anthony will keep his place uh, and come off after 60 minutes. You could see Pellistri, but, I mean, he must just not be doing something right. Ten Hag must just not want to give him opportunities because he was decent enough at the World Cup. He just haven't had a chance. And it's a really weird front three, I'll be honest. Look at that front four. Garnacho, Elanga, Anthony, and Fred. But our second 11 is just, it's not quite there yet. And he won't be there for a couple of years. It's the stages of progression. But the bench will be stacked. Bruno won't be on the bench, of course. But you'll have Rashford on the bench. You'll have Martial on the bench. You'll have Casemiro on the bench. You'll have Eriksen on the bench. Kobe Mania, I think, will hopefully get on the bench again. But probably not, considering Casemiro and Eriksen. Really. I don't think he will. Not in this game. He'll get his appearances this season at some point. That front four isn't good. It's got energy, yes. And that's going to be the most important thing. Pressing Charlton. And that's what Ten Hag will want. Get this game done, lad. Get it. Get a two-nil win in the first half an hour and breeze it for the rest. We don't still don't really do that enough, and you should be if you're going to do that. You're going to do it against lower league opposition, Charlton. They haven't ever reached the semi-final of the League Cup. I'm my personal prediction for this game. 
I think I'm going to go for a 2-1. I've actually got the last two, I think. Spot on, scores and all. I'm not going to make it a hat-trick. So 2-1, it's definitely not going to be 2-1 now that I've predicted it's 2-1. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot of changes I've put in that team. And the main, main, most important player in all of it, I would say, is Martinez in keeping that tempo and intensity in defence. It's probably Fred in keeping that tempo and intensity in attack, making sure everybody's pressing properly. But it's going to be really on McTominay to make sure that midfield holds its shape. And if it doesn't work out, you're going to be seeing Casemiro after 50, 60 minutes. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Games every three days. This is where the squad gets tested. Ten Hag will want to rotate. He'll want to make sure that his players are fit and ready for City. But he knows full well that sometimes when he's rotated, the tempos drop too much. And that's why I think Martinez is the, is the crucial player in all of this for this game against Charlton. You let me know what you think in the comments below. As you always do, make sure you subscribe if you're new.